Hi guys, Alex Simpson here from Apex Racing UK. In this video, we're going to show you how we take these four BenQ monitors, put them onto our, my existing rig. The difficulties that we find in there, the things that you'll need to know moving forward if you want to pull the trigger and do the same kind of build. Just to cover some of the basic features of the X3203R monitors. So the 31 and a half um, inches wide, 16.9 resolution, um, which is 20, 2560 by 1440. Got HDR support when I race in, hopefully um, include that. Um, yeah, dig, dig, um, you know, chop, chop, I race in, it'd be nice to have that. 144 hertz monitors. They are a uh, Visa wall mount um, bracket sort of um, compatible, but you do need to buy the actual bracket as an additional um, unit. So there's a special adapter that you have to put into it. Um, we'll show you a little shot of the back of it. So we're just putting the verse mount onto the uh, monitor right now. There's just one thing that we've noticed that it's a bit picky, but uh, I thought I'd mention it anyway. Um, there really is not a great deal of light that gets down into here. So you're trying to line up three screw holes and one sort of pinhole and it's really difficult like even when you put like a mobile phone light or something like that down there it's really hard to tell um, yeah just a bit fiddly I have to say this particular one the 32 the pinhole lined up pretty decent when we were in Germany and we had the 35s they were they were tough to get lined up and we spent a good 10-15 minutes just getting them in the right place um, yeah this one's not been too bad hopefully the other four will be the same Right guys, so we're about three hours into the build so far. I've got three monitors on. Um, it's been pretty straightforward so far. We've had a couple of little issues just getting everything lined up. Kind of want to get it just right. Now one thing we did notice was with the little notch that's on the bottom of the monitor, that's for the brightness intelligence plus feature. So if I have like a darker, you know, it's darker in my sort of garage, then what it will do is it boosts the light up a bit. But of course, if it's just a little bit lighter, it will kind of reduce it down. Well, that sits right at the bottom of there and it just it can be a little bit awkward because it sits right where my wheel uh, shaft is for my Leo Bodner sim steering system. And it just means that I might have to sacrifice a tiny little bit of getting the field of view absolutely bang on because I would want that extra inch closer to the shaft. But we'll see how it goes once we fire them all up. Okay guys, so yeah, we're all done. All four monitors are installed and uh, up and running. And I have to say, yeah, it was a little bit time consuming. And there was a couple of little tricky bits that we had to work our way through. Um, most importantly, obviously, um, it's just getting everything lined up. But I think that's with any triple screen setup that you have. The fourth screen, of course, it doesn't sit absolutely perfectly flush on the top of the, uh, of the sort of center monitor because of the curved nature of the screen, but really, you can't really notice it. I think I'll probably put a little bit of fabric behind the back of the monitor, and that will kind of cover up that little gap that we've got. You kind of actually need the bit of room as well because um, of the little notch there that comes down, is what you're, you're never gonna get it absolutely flush. Um, the first thing I really noticed when setting up the screens, um, perhaps like the, the only one sort of so far negative point that I've got, and this could be a Windows thing completely. It's a pump turtle on, turned it on, and the resolution was almost unreadable. I could barely see the, um, the NVIDIA control panel to figure out what kind of settings, uh, what kind of resolution it was. Now, that could, like I say, that could have just been my PC. Once I, uh, once I just sort of figured out a little bit of setting, did a restart and things like that, and everything come back up, and it picked up the native 1440p resolution, okay. Um, the setting up the, um, the spanning of the monitors as well, so on the NVIDIA control panel, that was a little bit quirky. Again, it just didn't want to find the right resolution. It was kind of looking at uh, a low, either a lower res at 60 hertz or it came up with like a 4K resolution. And again, that was only at 60 hertz. You have to manually go in and sort of pull over a custom resolution and then the 144 hertz work. So that maybe again, that's probably just the Windows and NVIDIA thing, but it's just something to be aware of that you know you might need some advice if you're not 100% sure with the uh, sort of the NVIDIA control panel. So just to give you a little idea of what I'm running as far as hardware here. Um, so I have got 
I've actually got two PCs, one streaming one, one gaming one, but both are linked into the fourth screen. I'll either run telemetry on the fourth um, or my streaming will take over. But for my main heart, my main PC, it's a Intel i7 6700K. Um, I'm running it water cooled, but I'm not overclocked at all. Obviously, I've got that headroom to do. I'm running an NVIDIA 1080 Ti. Again, that's on water, but running just stock at the moment. Um, so yeah, no, no overclocking off of um, sort of these these uh, figures that we'll show you. But um, 16 gig of RAM, solid state hard drive, um, decent power supply, all that sort of uh, all gubbins and goodness. First thing I noticed once I hit the sim was how bright the monitors were. I just, I really didn't expect it. Yeah, I was quite surprised really. Um, I don't know, it wasn't the HDR because HDR was turned off. And I don't think HDR supported an IRA sim, but when I was flipping through the menu, I did notice that it did change definitely the sort of the color and the contrast level slightly. So I'll do a follow up review after say a month of using it and we'll sort of see if that makes any kind of real difference in iRacing. But yeah, so if initial pressure was just like boom, in your face, like how much sort of more punchy the colors were um, than certainly than what I had previously. Of course, um, these are FreeSync monitor, not a G-Sync. I was using G-Sync before. So even though I didn't have G-Sync enabled or, and I'm not running, because obviously I'm running an NVIDIA graphics card and I can't run FreeSync, I was quite surprised actually that in the first five laps of testing, no screen tear. Now I don't know how that's possible, but I really didn't get it. Frame rates, like I say, were up and over 144, so you shouldn't get too much anyway. Um, but yeah, none at all. Um, so pretty blown away by that. Um, yeah, that's a, a feature you pay a fair, fair whack for as well. And the fact that these are giving me screen tear free racing for a lower price is, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, that's for sure. Really just to talk about sort of for a second, like the field of view that I got. Now with my old sort of setup, the 27s, I think some people say 24s to 27s tends to be the sweet spot on field of view. And I never quite got 180 degrees field of view. And I'm gonna to need to play a little bit with this moving forward as well, because definitely from the side profile, I'm literally got my full peripheral vision covered now. It's got to be 180, but I'll have a little play. And again, on the follow-up review, I'll tell you exactly where I'm at as far as sort of my field of view goes, but I have no reason to think that I won't be around 180. But just to give you an idea of how big these monitors are. We're looking at a total width of the rig now as 175 centimeters, actually wider than it is length now as well. So yeah, that's quite a footprint and you can see I'm just in my sort of like my work, my garage stroke work room. And uh, yeah, it takes up quite a bit of space and I'm gonna squeeze to get down the side of it to get out any, um, yeah, any PC supplies that I might need for work now, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it's quite an impressive setup when you're looking at it. This is going to be my setup from now on, and it is super important to me that the response rate was as low as I can get it. Now, these, like the 35-inch monitors, are a four millisecond response time. I've gone from a one millisecond. Now, what that difference that's going to make off my initial driving, none. Um, it's pretty close. I think realistically you're only starting to struggle when you sort of start to look at sort of 20 millisecond monitors and things like that, sort of absolutely bob standard things. Um, yeah, I didn't really notice anything, no real lag or anything like that, but again, I will do, and I'll speak to Leo Bodner and see if I can't get their lag tester, maybe do a little review on that. The other thing that, again, I mentioned that previous review was all about the hertz rates and just getting like that as high as you can get. Now, the 35s were 100 hertz. These are 144. Again, I had 144, and I have to say, I'm not noticing any difference. I didn't expect to notice any difference with that. And the reason that I go for 144 hertz, and maybe it hasn't been explained before in some other videos, is just, for me, when I'm driving on 145 compared to a 60, it just feels like everything's slowed down. Um, it's really hard to describe, but actually it seems like, like if the car starts to go, it doesn't go as quickly. And I feel like that's just because of, you know, the natural, natural way the monitors work. Um, kind of like the 60 hertz feels like more like a slideshow. You can't see what's in between it. 
So it's a bit harder to catch like slides when you're absolutely on the edge of control. So yeah, 144 for me, must have for any monitor. I'm glad these have got them on there. I might have been a bit skeptical if they hadn't. Okay guys, then just to wrap up my initial thoughts of these BenQ 32 inch monitors. Out of the box, they're just so bright, vivid monitors. The viewing angle on these are absolutely phenomenal as well. So it does help with the angles of the monitors. Sometimes they're a little bit dulled. Not got that one little bit. They're actually remarkably easy to set up. Um, did take us a little bit of time. They are quite heavy and weighty, but I haven't needed to adjust anything off of my original rig. I'm using the same, um, same triple mount bracket that I had before. Um, which is a plus point from, uh, from me, so you haven't got to go out there and get anything else. I'm um, going to obviously have a lot more in-depth with you. I'm going to need some time with them just to give you a little bit of extra information, and I'll come back to, to you with more of that to come. But yeah, my initial impressions, all the key features that I want, they're there, they're working. I was able to get them set up and running within a day, so yeah, positive. Of course, what we've got coming up uh, for you as well here on Apex Racing TV, we've got Kevin Ellis Jr. He is going to be reviewing the uh, well, 32 inch monitors, but the 1080 version of this as well. Kevin hasn't quite got the same hardware power that I have, so he didn't want to run the 1440p version. So yeah, slightly different model number. So keep an eye out on the channel. We're going to have that that he'll review. And again, you'll be able to compare hopefully like our frames that we're getting, perhaps the size of them and everything else like that. But yeah, I think that'll be quite an interesting one for those of you that haven't got you know, something like a 1080 TO on there, running something like a, you know, a 980 or a 1070, 1060, something like that. It's probably gonna be the best one to go for for you. So we just finished doing the FPS test. So we have a resolution of 7,680 by 1440. We had an average frame rate of 100 frames per second, a max of 118 and a minimum of 83. Now that was maxed out settings. But on a more optimized settings, and we'll put a link to the pictures of our optimized and max settings in the description. We had an average frame rate of 251 with a max of 303 and a minimum, minimum of 197. So yeah, quite a difference from the, uh, from the optimized and the max. So yeah, do check those out. They might be useful for you guys anyway, but we'll get Kevin to run the same settings in his test to compare the slightly lower spec graphics card against the sort of the uh, smaller resolution monitors to see actually, you know, if you can sort of pump out the same frames when you're not pushing so many pixels. Of course, yeah, thank you very much for watching this one. Of course, don't forget to give me a like, you know, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell if you want to get those reminders. And of course, thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you next time.